the first question is a two-part question. So the first question is, what is your current reality and what is your desired outcome? So when it comes down to answering the question, what? What is your current reality? Your current reality is my index finger. It's your score on the physical, mental, and financial well-being. That's, it's a non-scientific way of just saying, here's where I stand today. Now, one of the things that we do in our coaching program is that we consistently remind people to stop wishing they had a better past, right? So we like to tell people, don't shit all over yourself, right? I should have done, I should have, I could have, I would. Let's focus in on where are you at? And then let's focus on where you want to be, where you want to go, what you want to do, what you want to have. And what happens in doing that is you create this thing called structural tension. So in working with coach or working with a coach, if you set a deadline and then that coach is checking in on you and you're not making progress and your deadline is extending, that's bringing you into tension. And now what happens is you become more intentional when you're in tension. Now, what most people don't want to do is what? Be in tension. Why? Because it's uncomfortable. But if you get comfortable being in tension, you live a totally different life than the person who lives a comfortable life, right? I love the, I love the definition of complacency. It's the act of becoming self-satisfied, unaware of possible dangers. And as peak performers, right? I mean, you're in this, this group coaching course because you want to become a peak performer. You want to take yourself to a new peak, P-E-A-K. Well, to do that, you have to get comfortable being in tension, right? My question is, is that are you intentional about what it is that you want? Are you clearly defining what it is that you want to be, do, and have by the end of this year? Now, some of you set goals and aspirations like I did in January or in December for 2020, and a lot of those things went out the window, right? Because COVID disrupted our plan. However, that doesn't mean that we can't accomplish a lot of great things. We can, all we can do is all we can do. And in the next four months, I, can, I have a really big belief in each and every one of you. You can do all you can do. And all you can do is pretty amazing. But my question to each one of you peak performers is, do you know where you're at? And do you know where you're going? Specifically, do you know where you're going? Even if you have been detoured by a worldwide pandemic, do you know? And if you don't know where you're going and why you're going there, what are the chances of you getting there? Not very good, right? So the first question is, what is your current reality and what is your desired outcome? The second question is, why is it important to you to achieve your desired outcome? What would be the benefit of doing so? He would give me a deeper answer. And when he gave me that answer, I would ask him the question again, why is that important to you? Um, when you play at the seven level deeps of why, you increase the try by the percentage of emotion that's created by it. Because usually by, by the time that I get to the fifth or the sixth or the seventh generation of why, there's some pretty raw things that are showing up. I mean, I work with 40, 50 year old, 60 year old people, 80 year old people sometimes. Usually by the sixth or seventh answer of why, the phone goes quiet or the Zoom begins to have this stillness to it. And there usually is a tear somewhere that starts to well up. And there's this pain or there's this passion for what it is that they wanna do. And when we tap into that, when the why is strong, the how is insignificant. Right? The how becomes easier when the why becomes stronger. And oftentimes we put the obstacles, right? I mean, if I had a nickel for every time somebody gave me an excuse of COVID as a reason of why they're unhealthy, why has COVID make you unhealthy? It's the reason, the reason why COVID has made you unhealthy is because COVID shifted your routine. And what happened was you were unprepared to make the shift. But it's not COVID that's challenged you. COVID should be the reason why you should be healthy, not the reason why you should be unhealthy. You shouldn't have gained 19 pounds with COVID-19. You should have lost 19 pounds because why? Because obesity is the mother and father of all disease. 
over being overweight and obese is the number one cause of the top 10 killers in America in terms of lifestyle related diseases. The weight of the nation and the weight of the world is a hundred thousand times more challenging than the than the virus in the big scheme of things. If you look at the the healthcare system, we spend 2.3 trillion dollars in healthcare. Three percent of it goes to lifestyle, helping people to prevent diseases. The rest goes to solving the challenges that are caused by lifestyle. So, with that being said, we have to, we know that we live in a challenging environment. We have to shift that that perspective so that we're focusing in on what it is that we want, why we want it, the deeper reasons. And I would challenge each and every one of you to do the seven levels of deep. Why is that important to me? Why is that important to me? Spend a little time nourishing your mind rather than focusing in on going and buying that $4,000 of equipment, focus in on the power of your mind. Let's exercise our mind and the power behind it and say, why do we want to change? And then when will we change? you need three types of power. And if you don't tap into all three types of power, you are not going to have the power to make the changes that are required. First one is um, willpower. You know, you need to have some willpower and a made up mind. And I truly believe that there's nothing, absolutely nothing that can stop a made up mind. If you make up your mind to do it and you have the commitment to do it, you will do it. But here's what a lot of people lack that I have realized in my own journey, I was one of them, and other people, is that we lack the skill power. And I won't go into great detail, but general skill power. Do you know how to motivate yourself in terms of making healthy choices? Do you have a specific habit that feeds you healthy nutrition for your mental motivation and, and willpower? Do you have a skill set to plan, prepare, purchase, and portion size healthy food, and to drink more water. Do you have the skill sets to do that? Do you know how many calories your body's burning? Do you know how many calories your body is needing to consume to achieve the desired weight that you want, whether it's to lose weight, gain weight? Do you know that stuff? Do you know how many calories you are burning in a day so that you can understand what your exercise needs to be. So having some general skills of knowing some things, you don't have to become an expert in kinesiology or in nutrition, but if you don't understand some general principles and habits of healthy nutrition, hydration, movement or motion, sleep and energy management, and if you don't understand the power of association and the power of influence, if you don't understand that power. Now, what does that mean? Well, when you look at the uh, five to 10 people that you spend the most time with. This is the, the fourth question, by the way, who? Who are you surrounding yourself with? When you look at who you're spending your, spending your time with, when you look at the five or 10 people, you will notice some things. Now, if you were to give yourself a little bit of a analysis of, based upon the five or 10 people that I spend the most time with, are these people practicing the habits of health? Do they maintain healthy motivation and a healthy mindset? Do they maintain healthy nutrition and hydration habits? Do they maintain healthy movement, motion, and exercise habits? Do they attain or maintain healthy sleep and energy management habits? Do they maintain healthy support habits, healthy surroundings? Going through that process of identifying who is in your social circle, who's in your power of association, five or 10 people that you spend the most time with, and if you looked at those people and you said, how many of those people are practicing a habits of a healthy, uh, healthy life? How many of them are at a healthy weight or pursuing a healthy weight? Most of us would say less than 20 to 30%. Most of us, that's what, because 74% of Americans are overweight and obese and 97% are struggling with some area of physical or health well-being and financial well-being. So, the reality of it is, is that we become like the five to 10 people we spend the most time with. That's why you're in this group is because you're trying to socially connect with people who want more er, they want to be healthier, happier and wealthier, right? So if you spend more time with people that are getting healthier, or you let people know what it is that you want to do, be and have and why it's important to you and when you want it by, you have a greater chance of accomplishing it. Now, that's just a little bit of a peak, P-E-E-K, 
at your next peak, right? If you want to reach that next peak by a certain deadline, you need to know where you're at or what it is that your current reality is, what it is that you want. You need to know why it's important to you and not the topical reasons. You need to have a reason that's going to prevent you from sliding down the mountain and, cr and crawling into a comfort cave that is, you know, a, a hostess donut or whatever your favorite thing is, right? I mean, two big margaritas with all the salt and all the sugar and all the stuff that comes with them. I mean, anything that's really addicting or challenging to you, you have to have a reason why to overcome that immediate gratification or instinct or appetite. You need to know when you want to accomplish it and communicate it to people. And you need to know who you're surrounding yourself with. And if you can start partnering with a coach or partnering with a personal trainer or people that are in group fitness or things of that nature, or maybe you just share, I would just challenge each one of you to share a goal that's health or well-being related for the month of September and challenge yourself to do some work on it. They say that, uh, I don't know if you ever heard Dr. Daniel Amen, uh, he's done a lot of public television specials, but he talks about, you know, 70% of our thoughts are negative. Um, they're called automatic negative thoughts. He, he refers to them as ants. And the first thing that I would do and what he talks about is, is that how do you exterminate ants? You use RAID, right? RAID is a killer of ants. And to exterminate that negative thought, which is exactly what that is, is a negative. It's not a positive is that you recognize the thought and you acknowledge it in writing. And when you acknowledge that in writing and you ask yourself the question, is it true that I'm going to fail? The reason why people are thinking about failing is why? Because they failed. But if you think about the idea of why would I fail? Why would I fail? If I have decided to do this, why would I fail? There's nothing more powerful than a made up mind. So. Why don't I just decide to do it and then just do it? And I love my friend Helen Irwin says, uh, there's no such thing as failure. There's only feedback. So if you've bought a $4,000 machine and you didn't lose weight, you did not fail. You received feedback. <laughs> the feedback was, is that your calendar did not match your goal. And if you want to achieve your goal, your calendar has to match it. I can guarantee you that you can lose eight to 10 pounds between now and the end of September. Do you know how to do it? Your calendar has to match that goal because weight loss is not a theory of, you know, relativity. It's a science. It's simply a matter of creating less calories than your body's burning. This is a model of how we create optimal health and well-being in a person's life. Uh, we help them to decide. We help them to get started on what it is that they're about to do. We help them to clarify their current reality. We help them to clarify their desired outcome. And then we start helping them to start creating their life goals, their uh, health and well-being goals. What are the things that would really matter to them? Then we start backing it up with habits. These are the six macro habits of health that we help a individual to adopt into their life and then we use the optimal health community, which is the coach and the people that surround them that are in hot pursuit of their own peak performance health habits. And then we basically put them into a new state of being. And if they fall short of achieving the outcome, we go back and we inspect. We inspect what we expected and we validate, did our calendar match our goal? And if it didn't, which it oftentimes does not, right? Probably 100% of the time when somebody fails, we can go back and look at the calendar. We don't look at the COVID. We don't look at the circumstances. I mean, we could notice them and say, yes, there has been a change. So we failed to shift. And that's my ultimate desire for each and every one of you. I want you to know what your current reality is. I want you to know what your current or what your desired outcome is. I want you to know why the real reasons of why you want to succeed. I want you to know who you're going to spend up or when you want to end up getting your goal. I want you to know where you're going to spend your time. I want you to know who you're going to be surrounding yourself with. And the final thing is, is that I want you to know how you can do it. Not all the reasons of how you can't do it, because that's a lot of what you have in your mind right now. But I'm confident you can do anything you want to do with health and well-being. 
I've proven it. I've had a lot of other people that have proven it. There's nothing stopping you from becoming a better version of you in this 2020.